Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In this week's furniture makeover, I am throwing every technique at this piece to give it a complete overhaul. I ran into a lot of issues and problem solving this week, and I'm trying a bunch of new techniques that I have learned from my fellow Instagram and YouTube furniture flippers. So this is gonna be a really entertaining one. So if you wanna see how this piece turns out, just keep watching. I think you would call this a sideboard. It would be good for an entryway or a dining room. It has uh, two drawers and then three doors that open to some shelving. The decorative features on here, I kind of wanted to tone down and make this piece a little bit more modern. I have seen my friend Yari at Lily Moon Vintage do this before, so I decided to tackle this on my own. I was able to remove all the screws on the trim and then I used a pry bar to get the pieces off. After I got these off, I measured and then I went up to Home Depot and got a piece of primed pine to create some new trim around my piece. I measured the board to size and then my husband made a 45 degree angle cut on the miter saw for me so that I could piece these together as a 90 degree angle around the base. Once we had the cuts made, I lined the board up to get it exactly where I wanted it and then I clamped it into place. And then I took my drill and I did some pilot holes in those existing holes that are on the piece of furniture and then I took the screws and screwed the board in place. And then I repeated this process on both of the sides. Unfortunately, I did crack this one side when I was taking my trim piece off, so I needed to make some quick repairs to it. I put some wood glue in this blunt tip syringe. I have seen this so many times from so many other furniture painters. It's my first time trying it out and it works like a dream. So this was looking pretty good, but I needed to get some back supports on there. So I grabbed what was previously on there and then cut them down to size to match up the current trim that I put on. I decided I wanted to put some feet on this piece to lift it up off the ground a little bit, so I grabbed these brackets from the hardware store and installed them in all four corners. There were lots of feet to choose from that just screw right in these brackets. I ended up picking up two different styles, but this one won out in the end. Okay, now I'm ready to prep my piece for painting. I'm gonna be removing the hardware and all the drawers and the cabinets, and I'm giving them a clean with some Simple Green, which is a degreaser that's gonna cut all the grime and gunk on this thing. This you spray on and let it set for a couple minutes, come back and scrub it down and then give it all a good rinse. And here is where my project goes off the rails a little bit. I decided to use a Bondo wood filler to fill in these little flowers. I wanted to get rid of them. And I use Bondo because it dries really fast and really hard, so I thought I was saving myself time. I put way too much Bondo on here, which I didn't think would be a problem because I have some heavy duty sanders, but neither of them could fit in this tight space because of this oval. So after two days of sanding, I finally decided to remove this and thought I could sand it and put it back on, but the veneer chipped off with it. So at this point, I just abandoned these doors altogether and decided to move forward with the project. So here I'm just mixing up some water with some wood filler. This is Dixie Mud, but you could use any type of wood filler you want to kind of thin it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna paint this on. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna fill my grain because this is an oak piece with a very strong grain. Even when I paint it, you're still gonna be able to see that. So I'm just pushing some of that wood filler in here, painting it all over to fill in that grain. And I learned this technique by watching Danny from Just Paint It by Danny. She has 
lots of amazing tips like this to make your furniture look beautiful. You guys should be following her if you aren't. And she just launched a YouTube channel as well. So go check out Danny. Okay, so while that is drying, I knew I wanted to do a two-tone finish on this, so I am stripping off my top with my Festool Rotex 90. You guys know I have two different sanders, and you'll be seeing both of them in this project. I really prefer using this one to strip tops because it does it so fast. And I popped on the detail delta head that comes with the sander too to get the sides of the top. Now I'm being extra because I'm going to switch over to my uh, surf prep sander to do all the wood grain filling sanding because I can use my foam applicators and I think the sander is just gentler and it gets around those curves really well so I like using it for a scuff sand on the body. I use both of these sanders on the same dust extractor by Festool so since I already had this one hooked up I just grabbed a 150 sandpaper to smooth out this top a little bit further. If you guys are interested in seeing me compare these two sanders in a video and letting you know what I like about them, please comment down below and I will get that video made for you. So I'm just getting all my dust cleaned off and then I set up my Wagner spray tent and I'm rolling my piece in there today because of all the time I wasted trying to fix those doors, I'm going to be spraying this piece today. So I'm just going to tape off the top and the feet because I want to leave those bare wood. I'm going to be painting the piece with a Dixie Belle in the Navy today. I have recently used Dixie Belle paint to spray some cabinets in my laundry room that I will be sharing with you guys soon. So I got really comfortable with using this paint in the sprayer and I found I like to water it down about 10% before I put it in my sprayer. So I just do that in a separate container and then I'm going to use a paint strainer as I put it into my container for my sprayer. I have a Wagner Flexio 3000 that comes with a smaller detailed nozzle that helps give you a really smooth finish, works well with chalk paint. I put it on this setting in between the 7 and 8. That is what works best for me when I have my paint at this consistency. If you're doing this on your own, you might have to play with it a little bit to find the consistency that you're most comfortable with, but you can play with the dials and move them up and down until you get the consistency that you want. I have a video using the sprayer that I did some chairs with and I go into more detail about the features of the gun and how to use it and how to clean it. So I will link that video down below so you can check that out. This is only my third time using the sprayer, but I'm getting more comfortable with it each time I go. So my best advice to you is just practice and learn as you go. I let this dry for about two hours and then I came back in and I did a second coat over the entire piece. I'm going to be spraying Gator Hide as my top coat on my piece today. And since this is such a dark color, I'm adding a little bit of paint to my top coat so that it won't get hazy. I learned this tip from Katie Scott and Brandy at Brush by Brandy. And here is where things take a bad turn again. I had my setting too high on my sprayer. Like I said, I recently did some cabinets with Gator Hide and they turned out amazing. But I had my sprayer set too high. I could tell it was going on weird and it ended up dragging and sagging. So my lesson is here. If you think something is wrong, stop and try to figure out what's wrong. Because the next day I had to come back in and I had to sand down all that 
gunky runny top coat that I had put on um, with my surf prep and then I came back in and I painted another coat of paint on to try to start over fresh with the top coat. So this time I adjusted my settings all the way to the lowest setting because of how thin this uh, top coat is going on. So I started at the very lowest and then I thought I would work my way up if it wasn't coming out enough and I tested it out on some wood samples and on some cardboard I had first. So I definitely recommend doing this. Don't get overconfident like I was thinking I did this once. I know what I'm doing. So now I know that I really need to test out my spray before I commit to spraying on my piece. And the other thing I learned is when you're doing a dark color like this, your first coat is going to look kind of uneven, but as you add that second and third coat, it really evens out and you get that top coat everywhere with a light color like I did for my cabinets. I didn't really notice that. So lesson learned, a darker color is going to be a little bit harder, but as you put more and more coats on, your top coat is going to smooth out more and more. I waited two hours in between each coat and ended up doing three coats and then once everything was dry I stripped all my protective paper off and then I was ready to go to work on the top and the feet. I wanted to make this as easy and painless as possible because of all I had already been through with this piece. So I grabbed my Minwax white grain lightning wax because this is going to give me a little bit of color, sink into the grain, give me that beautiful white wash look and it's going to seal all at the same time. I'm applying this in a circular motion all on the top of the piece. I'm gonna add it to the legs and the sides as well. You let this sit on for about three to five minutes and then you come back and wipe it off with a clean cloth and you actually wipe it against the grain. I know I'm always wiping with the grain, but with this particular wax, you go ahead and wipe against the grain first and then just get any of that excess off as well. All right, the hard work is over. The last step was adding some new hardware. I got this at Lowe's. It's just a classic gold brass look to really contrast against this really dark navy. And since I no longer have doors, I wanted to make this look like a console. So I grabbed some hyacinth baskets from Lowe's as well and placed those in there. You guys, this one tried to take me out. I know I threw a lot at it, but I'm really happy with the end result. I blame all my super talented friends on Instagram and here on YouTube for making me want to try out all these techniques. Next time I probably shouldn't throw them all into one piece, but I love the way this turned out and I think it would be great in anybody's home and it's a very versatile. Thank you for joining me for today's crazy roller coaster ride of a furniture makeover. I'm so glad this thing is done, but you might see it again because I'm not giving up on those doors just yet. I have a fun idea for them, so stay tuned for that. I'll be back next week with another project, probably a one step paint next week, and I will see you guys next time. Sir, Murphy, excuse me. You just messed up my fake flooring. Do you have somewhere else that you could sit besides there? Just, just say it again. This I can see actually leaving in here. Yes! <laughs> so you got a little turn bar fall on your face. Let me see. The fur's all hanging off. Weird. Thank you. Ta-da! I hope my microphone is on.